let's go ahead and start the shit. So this mm. is Slashers, your new favorite podcast about your new favorite horror media. My name is Aid, and today is a special Call Your Ghoul Friend episode because today not only am I joined by my boo-boo Mikey, but we also have Austin from Frightmares Podcast joining us. So boys, say hello to the mutant goons from beyond. Hi. Hello. That was like so anticlimactic. Anyways. Well, I, didn't um, who, I didn't know who was going to go first. I, thought- I was going to let Mikey go first because, you know, he's he's the other host of Slashers. I, I'm just here to commentate on things. So, Mikey, you're always before me. Mm, that's right. Commentate <laughs> on these tits, right? Oh, yeah, uh, he's sure. the first in the human centipede. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's the middle? Because I don't want to be the middle. I, I, I vote I'm not in the middle. That's the worst part to be in. Adrian right. can be in the middle because that means that we can have a baby. <laughs> ah! oh my god i'm just I saying know. if you're if you're the middle of the centipede does that mean we're a female centipede when we're conjoined well i don't know but doesn't didn't the middle one die first or no no the middle girl was supposed to be at uh, what doesn't matter anyways i didn't watch that shit literally i've watched it one time seen. and i think that was enough for my eyeballs so I, I yeah I watched it once my brother bought it he thought it was the best thing in the world and we're all <laughs> watching it at my aunt's house and i'm like you what? watched that with family? Yes, yeah. The oh. cousins, the whole family. Ooh. <laughs> Human centipede. Ooh, my mom would have a heart attack if she saw that. Oh, well, oh no. Welcome to the Santiago family where none of us give a fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, um, but what Human Centipede is not is a Blumhouse film, <laughs> which <laughs> which is what we're about to talk about today. And so I just wanted a quick story. Before we begin, the only reason we're doing Blumhouse is that one of my coworkers found out that I do a horror podcast and now he like wants to talk to me every day about it. And, you know, he's Mr. Maples, we're going to call him for anonymity purposes. Um, But he, you know, he's about, he's like, he's about to retire. So like, this is last year. So he's just like living his best life. Like, I love it. Um, And he's still like, you know, pretty cognizant. Like he's got his, all, all his, you know whatever going on so he's not you know like not about to like leave the planet so good for him (laughs) even though as a teacher I would be like oh my god I'm about to die and I've only been teaching for like nine eight nine years whatever so anyway um he told me a story about his childhood home growing up and how they had built the house on a cemetery but they were told similar to poltergeist that the bodies were moved And I guess one day he and his sister came home when they were kids and they had, they were like moving the sewer system to the septic tank. I don't know how that works. I'm not a homeowner. And the backhoe was like digging up for the hole for the septic tank. And well, that's one thing you can speak about (laughs) the backhoe and the hole. Yeah. (laughs) And I, when they were digging it up, there were both the, the guy ran out screaming to a supervisor and the kids looked in the, and the, what is that called? The bat, whatever the, the shovel part. Right. And there shovel was like a, there was like human bones and a skull poking out. So they had never moved the bodies. <laughs> <laughs> Only moved the headstones, but you never moved the bodies. Yeah. Exactly. That's, uh, uh, that's like real life. Scary. No Ooh, I actually have something interesting to add to that whenever you're done. Oh, yeah. No, but since then, I guess the entire family has experienced, you know, paranormal activity. Obviously, there's this screaming woman. He actually has video footage. And this was like from back in the day. So I don't know how they recorded this, but um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, uh, Mr. Maples, I love you. I'm I'm kidding. Like, you know, I've had a couple of beers, so please don't judge me anyways. um, And which was why it doesn't matter. Like, so he's telling me all these stories and I'm listening and I'm just getting more and more horrified. And then he's like, oh yeah, my sister lives in the house now, but we don't tell the kids this because then the kids would be upset. And I'm like, you mean they don't hear the screaming woman that you heard your whole life? Like the, the kids don't hear it now. I'm sure they're all traumatized. And you're like, oh, well. <laughs> the funniest oh, no. thing would be like, oh, well, we didn't even move the bodies after we found them. <laughs> <laughs> I was so like, there. if I saw a skull sitting out in the the dirt, I would take it. I'm like, did you keep it? Like, <laughs> so like bury it deeper. Just bury yeah. it. Deeper. <laughs> Times are tough. You can't hire one. someone to come get them. <laughs> I know. Like, I would have been like, okay, like, give me the fucking skull. I'll put it on the dresser. Like, what a cute decoration. Huh. Hello. Do you know the fun fact about the skeletons in the pool in Poltergeist? Do you what know? 
They said they were real skeletons, but then I was watching a documentary recently that they said they debunked that and they said that's not true. So I don't know. (sighs) I don't know who is, I I don't know who to believe, nor do it, you know, I like it. It's hard to know who to believe when you hear two, like two different things. You're like, all right, well, was it a documentary or something or like a special features? Yes, there was something, I think it was something related to, um, God, what was I watching it on? Because I was like, <gasps> like, I was so like, completely. Was it that cursed film show? Or yes. was it like, oh, it was okay. cursed films. Okay. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, was that all of Mr. Oaks? I mean, it was Mr. <laughs> Maples' story. <laughs> Did Mike, I he's like, I want to fucking talk. Let me talk. No, well, I just want to tell us my like because I, 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 I say I think pretty sure I said his real name too. We're no, gonna have to you just, didn't. We'll oh, just bleep it out. Bleeps oh, are well, fun. Bleeps people, are fun. <laughs> bleeps and record scratches. I use those and people love them. I yep, know. that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, uh, similarly, I don't know why I didn't remember this when you were telling me kind of roundabout like summary of the story i just thought of this when you started talking about it right now but um adam my uh who's bondo for anybody who doesn't know he is a property manager at an apartment complex over in not like a super new part of town but it's like a newer part of town and um he had someone from the news come by and he was the news was like hey we we're just wondering if we can come and talk to whoever runs the property here like we have questions about the cemetery in the back yada yada he's like there's no cemetery in the back he's like yeah there is because like his um his apartment complex is like ass to ass with another apartment complex so like their parking lots kind of connect together so it's like a big parking lot and there's apartment complex on each side um and so he's like no there's not and so he's like yeah um so long story short they found out that like in the middle of the apartment complex there's maybe like a 10 by 10 area that's fenced in which you don't think anything of because you usually see that and it's either like a generator's there or something but no that's like overgrown trees and headstones and so <laughs> they don't know who owns it because it's in the middle of these two complexes that are owned separately um apparently the city owns it but the city's kind of not done anything with it and it goes back like a long time when like whoever owned that huge chunk of land owned it and that was their cemetery then they started selling off plots but like that small section didn't get sold it was very strange and so I was like that's creepy I was looking at pictures and like on google maps and you can see it and stuff so and then if you google if you google maps it and like do a bird's eye view you can actually see the little headstones oh, so no. super creepy oh. um, I'm gonna pass yeah. <laughs> well i that's, just think it's, that a, that's such an archaic thing that people do right bury bodies because eventually everything disintegrates and now we're just taking up all of this land for dead bodies like so stupid like you burn know, them all put grandma in the fucking urn stick her in your <laughs> living room and move on anyway um and it, what, grandma's not gonna know she's dead so who cares Doesn't anyway matter. <laughs> bless her heart and <laughs> so so with that, I, Mr. Maples had asked us if we would ever do, if we'd ever done The Conjuring. And I said, no, because I know that, you know, Jake is not about The Conjuring and neither is Doug. I need uh, to know what he is about. Besides Blood Diner, I know he is a very strong advocate for Blood Diner and so am I. But like, you know, what uh, what are what are, what are some things that he does enjoy? Because every time we do a podcast, he's like, mm, I don't know. There's no pleasing him. He, <laughs> there really isn't. And he can hear this all he wants. I love you, Jake, but there is no pleasing you. Well, the last so, time he was pleased was Prey. Yes. Okay. And so I was, I was a little surprised by that. I loved Prey, but I was surprised that he liked it because he always has something to say. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's going to put some uh, thing on my face and post it. So after he hears this, so, anyways, <laughs> he let me shut up. A Photoshop. Oh my God. Seriously. So, so there's fast that. With that shit. Uh, but he likes horror comedy. So usually if it's something silly or something, you know, very obscure, that's what he's into, which is fine. That's fine. I I enjoy horror comedies as well. Do I think they're worth discussing all the time? Not really. And so I was like, okay, we can do The Conjuring because it's actually one of the few Blumhouse films that I do enjoy. 
And then upon research for this episode and my old age and my sen senility, I realized that The Conjuring is not a Blumhouse film. <laughs> I probably thought that because of James Wan being involved and Patrick Wilson, right? So I assumed it was Blumhouse because it's very similar to Insidious. And I just, I I thought that and I, I was wrong. I would like to apologize to, you know, the powers that be for my, my, my faux pas. Your indiscretion. My well, little indiscretion. Me, you had me going too, because I was like, I, I double, like I, I thought about it and I was like, is that a Blumhouse? And I was like, yeah, it's got, it's a Blumhouse. She's mentioning it. So I was like, I'm down to do that. And then you were like, it's not a Blumhouse. And I was like, I wasn't sure if it was or not. I'm pretty sure it's Universal uh, movie, which Universal and Blumhouse work like hand in hand. So it's almost in the family, I would say. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. right there. <laughs> I think <laughs> it's like, happens. no, it's actually Fox and New Line from what I looked up. Oh, and fuck. I'm like, so I'm wrong too. Jesus. Okay. I, but which, you know, I, I was like New Line. I go, I thought New Line, but I don't know. This is what I looked up on Google. So oh, what, okay. whatever, we're all wrong. So the, all con wrong. <laughs> the Conjuring, I mean, is a great film. The Conjuring scared the shit out of me. And for a PG-13 horror film and the way that it, you know, the the, the, the twist at the ending, like. No, I, it's R. Is it R? It's R. It's only rated R for specifically scary imagery. There's no swearing. There's no blood and gore. It is strictly rated R specifically hmm. because of how scary the imagery is that is the only reason it's rated r yeah and i'm, yeah. I'm sure like elements of like the suicide and the hanging and stuff like that you know i'm yeah. sure that that all makes that sense. Shit. yeah so whatever i'd show it to my kids anyway it's fine um <laughs> if i had them i don't um but oh, i thought you meant your kids in high oh. school oh my students i could probably show my students that yeah. too but you know the whole the whole um snafu with uh what was it what did i show them silence, silence of the of lambs, the lambs. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit okay what happened there i don't know the story uh, there. i traumatized a few well not children they're seniors they're 18 they're years seniors. old years i had Come six on. kids in the room and i was like you know what they're like let's watch a scary movie and they were trying to pick it i said no i go we're gonna find something based on a book and i'm like oh i forgot silence of the lambs is based on a book and i'm an english oh. teacher so here we go <laughs> i got some looks they were like literally sitting there like this at one point Come and i'm on, like that's pretty tame and i'm like i guess for us though but for us i, I <laughs> it's a great it's a great film but i think that yeah. it was just like images that they probably never would have come across and i'm just a horrible person but it's okay <laughs> anyways um but you know so with blumhouse the thing is with blumhouse and i i don't think we really cover any blumhouse films is the reason uh because a lot of I would say seasoned horror fans are not big on Blumhouse because Blumhouse is basically like a like a little churning factory, right? Like they just pump these horror movies out. Most of them are PG-13. They all have the same formula, the same stupid kids. They get picked off one by one. It's jump scare reliant. It's very, it's very like not original. There's really not a lot that Blumhouse offers or so I thought. And so really quickly, for those of you listening who maybe don't know anything about Blumhouse or care to know, they do follow us on Instagram. So I got to stop talking shit. Oh, but, hi, Jason. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know Jason Bloom. Um, but Blumhouse Productions is an American film and television production company founded in 2000 by Jason Blum. It is known mainly for producing horror films such as Paranormal Activity, Insidious, The Purge, Split, Get Out, Happy Death Day, the Invisible Man and Black Phone. And so we know that at the beginning, I guess in the early 2000s, when I made my list, they only had about, I, I'm looking at like, I think seven, seven pictures from about 2002 to 2009. But obviously their breakout was Paranormal Activity in 2009. Yep. Mm -hmm. That movie <laughs> grossed, like, I think it cost them a million dollars to make. And I believe it grossed like 110 million. So that is a huge success and probably paid for every single sequel that they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. And and it was scary. I, I will admit that I was really horrified when I first saw it. I was in college and I was afraid to go home because I didn't want to be by myself after classes. So like I went to my friend's house and hung out there until my boyfriend at the time got home because I'm like, I don't want to go home yeah. <laughs> by myself. <laughs> I think that was on the last time I've been legit scared of a movie like where I didn't want to be by myself at night um and it's only happened twice when I've been like 
a highly functioning adult, not like a child. Um, Because the first one was The Ring when I saw that in middle school. And the second time was um, Mm -hmm. Paranormal Activity when I was 19 in San... And I lived in San Diego. And it was before we knew it was a movie. And they were advertising it as like found footage they found. Like the Blair Witch. Yeah. And so I was watching it and it opens up like San Diego. And I was like, oh, that's where I live. And then at the end, I was like, I don't want to go home. (laughs) <laughs> no and that's the, and that's the issue too with that one because it's it plays on all of your natural like it plays very naturally like you're just watching something kind of unfold which the Blair Witch does with the Blair Witch is so when you watch it like because I watched it recently and I'm, my that big ass sport kit how big is the tv in the living room Dan 75, 75 inches I guess Ooh. so I know size matters and you watch Blair Witch on that and you're like mm and yeah. but paranormal activity has more of a uh it, i guess it's more seamless kind of I, I don't know what it is but it's, there's a lot more payoff yeah there is, like, yeah like blair witch was like all tell no show and then paranormal activity is like all show i mean of course you don't see the entity until much later but there's a lot more that happens on screen in paranormal activity than blair witch yeah. yeah and and so rightfully so that i feel like okay you know this is a great production company and especially when you're starting blumhouse if you you know if those of you watching the video if you look at my black my my background excuse me <laughs> the fuck did i just say my background my ba- <laughs> my background um goodness at the beginning you know it starts off like a janky ass like scary you know horror type uh haunted house intro kind of thing so you know i it when you when it's sort of like uh lion's gate when you see the the skull through the the keyhole right so you know it's going to be a good horror movie or it's going to be a horror movie but unfortunately we know that blumhouse has also created a bunch of stinkers as well and so obviously they're churning things out for monetary value which i don't i don't i blame them for i do not blame them for at all because why wouldn't you but when I went through this list, there's so many films. Like if you start from 2010 on, from 2010 to 20, Jesus Christ, to 2020, to 2019, I there's probably like, I, I don't, I, I didn't even count. There's got to be like 30, 40 movies, films that they did. Among them being the Martyrs remake, which was trash. <laughs> absolutely the original is a masterpiece love that one the remake yeah. not so much i didn't know that they did the remake though until i looked up the list of blumhouse and i was like oh yeah yeah and that kind of tracks unfortunately there's yeah. a lot of movies so i did three categories i did the good the bad and the elite of blumhouse and everything else that's not on one of these lists is the meh category or the haven't seen category. Okay. Um, <laughs> so so for sake of time, Mikey, give me your top three good, bad, elite, and then Austin after that, and I'll just share mine. So okay. top Fine. three from each of us. I know, but we could be here all day. There's a lot to discuss, but okay. we're on a time crunch because Mikey has to go. So stop yelling at me. I um, am. So we'll start off with good. The top three in good, I'm going to say, probably will be Black Phone, Freaky, and Us. Um, I only have four bad, so I'll just say the first three. Well, you can say te- all four. Just say all four. Fuck it. Te- technically, the first one is three, but I just put the Halloween franchise, Truth or Dare, <laughs> Fantasy Island, and Ouija. Ugh. Fantasy, I, Fantasy Island, I think, is probably yeah. the fucking pinnacle of, of shit that's ever yeah. come out of that studio. Um, um, for the elite, I only have five, but these are like movies that I feel well, like are top tier. Then and say the five. You can say the five. Yeah, it's. I was going to. Um, Happy Death Day. I felt really brought back the horror comedy, almost like the new version of Groundhog's Day. Yep. Um, Paranormal Activity, don't even need to explain that one. The Invisible Man, super strong entry into the Blumhouse family. Um, Hunt did a really good job of crossing politics and horror. Mm-hmm. Um, Hush and Creep. Mm-hmm. I actually just watched Creep uh, two days ago, and we're going to watch Creep 2 after this podcast. So, Oh, Creep 2 is really good. Funny that um, you mentioned that. I also have a special shout out because they also produced the show The River which was one of my favorite shows to be on TV. 
that found footage one with uh they're, when they're in the jungle mm-hmm. they did they produced that yeah okay honorable mention i love it yeah so austin your list sir all right so i mean there's plenty that i do enjoy but i'll just i'll give you a top three uh good <clears throat> number three being oculus mike flanagan uh Catherine gillen is that her name kate jillian jillian yeah um <laughs> I love that one. I'm a sucker for anything Mike Flanagan does. Uh, number two being the first Halloween remake. I think that one is a very good continuation from 78 and how they link the two. Uh, the other two, I don't want to talk about. Uh, and then number one for me, where the fuck did it just go? Um, oh, my God. Where did it go? Oh, uh, Sinister. I really love Sinister, mm-hmm. Ethan Hawke, Scott Derrickson. I think that is a solid entry. And that's probably my favorite Blumhouse. If you know, It's also one of my favorites in general. Um, going down for bad movies. Oh, well, we already mentioned Martyrs. I'm not a fan of that one. Um, I don't really, there's so many, like, which ones do I mention that are just not great? I don't like the forever purge. I thought that one was probably the weakest entry in the purge saga. Uh, it got way too political for me, um, when they weren't really too political. So they just kind of oversaturated uh, that movie for me. And then The Gallows Act 2 was god-awful. I really enjoyed the first one because I love found footage, and I thought it was pretty creepy. But the second one that they followed up with was not found footage, and it was just not good at all. So that would be my three favorites and then three not-so-good movies. Mm. Respectable list, Austin. Thank you. I do enjoy the original Gallows as well. Yeah, it's like it's like not like it's a great movie, but it's just it's fun. Like it's I thought I, it was I, great. I thought it was scary, but I was even... yeah, it's spooky. You know, like yeah. it's it's a lot of fun for sure. There, I, I would say that there's atmosphere with that one, but was I impressed? No, <laughs> my Where? nipples were erect the whole time I was watching. Okay, Ooh, no. okay. <laughs> I was like a, I was like a weather woman. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. Um, so I mean, with mine, I don't, I don't really want to kind of repeat everything everybody said. So I'm going to go through my my list. I do agree with Happy Death Day. Uh, as far as uh, the, it's not part of my list. The only reason I say that is because I was basically her in college, like same at it, like I was a fucking bitch. And so yeah. when I watched that movie, I was like, <gasps> like I, yeah. I was that terrible. Oh my god. And then, uh, but you know, I do agree with Hush. But my top three that I would say for me from you know, going away from your list because I agree with most of your top threes is and I love creep and I hate to to leave it out of my list, but whatever is the Lords of Salem. I do love that. I love that movie. Um, I really love the town that dreaded sundown. The remake, right? The re- yeah, but it's actually it part two. Solid. Yeah. It, oh, it's a part two? It's a part two. Yeah, it's like a continuation. It's and so, and you that. don't find that out until the end, which I think is great. And, but the fucking gore and violence in that film, I mean, it matches because the first one is so mean spirited. And this one was too. And I just thought that it was such a good, like a good way to kind of bring it back. But I don't think enough yeah. people appreciate the old one. So I think that's why the new one fell flat. This is just me speculating. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, and I love Hush. Oh, but Ma, I wanted to put Ma on the list. Yes. Because so we've done Ma. Yeah, Ma is so good. Love Ma. Um, and Octavia so she, Spencer is just phenomenal in that movie. Oh, she, yeah. There's nothing that she does that I don't love. And so, I, yeah, she's just fucking amazing. And so, uh, you know, great. So those are my good ones. My bad ones. Uh, the Lazarus Effect. I just want to talk about that for a second. What a fucking, like, what does Jake say? He says something dirty. It's an example of a movie that exists, right? No, Jake or Doug. I don't know. One of them, something about like not coming or something. I can't remember. But anyways, (laughs) it's it's one of those where you just, it it just horrible. didn't make you come. Didn't make me come. So I don't, I, God, what was it? What did they say? And now it's going to drive me nuts, but who cares? Um, So another (laughs) group real quick. Hold on. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, what, is what does Jake thing? say about not coming? Everybody tell me right now. Yeah. <laughs> There's the thing that he says, and now I care. Um, something about not release. I, God, what is it? Oh all my God. Up, no release. No, but he says it all the time, and now I can't. Uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, I The Black Christmas remake. Oh, uh-huh. that movie can fucking suck a big 
Why? That dick. Why? I want to know. The, okay. So firstly, and we've talked about this on our show before, is that it is a film that is trying to overtly be feminist, but it's basically made by someone who thinks this is what feminism is and doesn't really believe You're... in it or have a, uh, I don't know, or have some sort of inkling of what feminism is or even cares about the movement right yeah. they're just overtly putting things in and, and creating these these women characters that they think that feminists are going to root for and in, in actuality i think that they're all insufferable and i don't know if that was intentional and i don't care you can't give me a black christmas remake the only good thing about that fucking movie was the, the beginning where the, when they, she's killed and the she does it looks like the angel wings and the blood in the snow that was a pretty image yeah. but uh, but aside from that the rest of the film and carrie elvis bless his heart like you know if you're gonna put carrie elvis in a movie like put him in a good fucking movie yeah. and and then don't beat somebody with a menorah at the end because now you're just being anti-semitic so at this point <laughs> i feel like that movie should just burn <laughs> I, I we're talking you know you cannot you cannot talk about you know things about sexual assault like this girl was assaulted and they do a christmas dance over it to get him in trouble like mean girls like what the fuck is that like how can you i the, it's just completely insensitive to all of this anyways i can't i whatever we're gonna move on and then um another one that i hated obviously was I had on my list Insidious because we're talking about that today. I don't like that movie. I didn't like it back then when I saw it. And so, so I read... <laughs> we've done two podcasts now where you don't <laughs> like the movies that we're talking about. Why did we do this one, Aid? Well, it's a ghost movie. I knew that okay. the both of you had seen it, and I know both of you <laughs> like it, right? I and I, it. I think that there's a lot of good aspects to it. I don't want to say that I, I don't want to say that it's a bad movie. Like it's not a bad movie. I just I don't, don't remember care. giving my opinion on it. Mikey, what is your opinion on Insidious so we can start talking about that? <sighs> well, mm -hmm. let me tell you about 1997's Insidious by one director, James Cameron. The movie starts off... I'm just kidding. I don't know who did any of it. Um, <laughs> like 1997? What I, I don't know. <laughs> did I watch um, the wrong movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, um... Insidious oh. is okay. The thing about Insidious, it what really gave it some points was everybody flipped the shit out when Darth Maul was behind Patrick Wilson in that one scene. <laughs> and so Dark, Darth Maul's meth head cousin. What the yeah. fuck? And that's pretty much <laughs> it. Shit. But Insidious is very much like the conjuring. Like the conjuring for me, I was terrified because of the anxiety that was put upon me before I got there. People were like, it's so scary. It's rated R just because it's so scary. It's so scary. But like when I was watching it, I was like, this is just people in makeup. Oh, post not clarity. Sorry. Oh. Pfft. Um <laughs> well, um my post not clarity after seeing the ghost in both Insidious and uh Conjuring was these are just people in like theater makeup. And so it wasn't very scary. And then what also kind of annoyed me about Insidious towards the end is I was like, okay, well now this is Poltergeist. Um, mm -hmm. And that was, it was okay. I haven't seen it more than once because I don't feel the need to see it more than once. I don't remember what the second one was about, but these movies I feel tend to be better this, with the sequel. Like I love The Conjuring 2. Um, I love Ouija 2. I love Annabelle 2. Did I love Insidious 2? I don't remember. <laughs> There's yeah. too many of them. I was trying to remember which movie, like what happened in which movie. And I watched this one, you know, today and I was like, okay, that's, but then I'm like, what the fuck happened in two? I haven't, I cannot remember what happens in Insidious 2. So I'm like, now I have to watch them to, you know, recall everything that happened because there's four of them now with one coming out next year too. Uh... Uh, yeah. Which is uh, going to be actually be directed by Patrick Wilson. I think it's called, I don't even know at this point, but I don't know. Um, The last key was definitely the most, I don't know. Stupid. Yeah, I was not a fan of that one. One, two, and three, I feel are solid, but then the last key tried to do something a little different that just didn't work. But uh, yeah, I'm with you on not remembering exactly what happened in each movie. Yeah. Well, it's a, I think to its detriment. So the Insidious follows a family who moves into a new home and they have three children. There is 
there is an insidious entity in the house that takes the son over, but we realize, you know, there's, as the movie goes on, you find out more reasons why it's targeting and they, the family moves and the, the, the entity still, the entities still follow them. Right. And so I remember when I had first initially seen it, I saw in the movie theater years ago, actually downstairs. Now that I think about it, oh my God, I'm always downtown, I guess. And this was like, <laughs> what year was this fucking movie? Jesus Christ. I think this one was, was like, 2010. Yeah, I was like 20, no. I was 22. Oh my God. Okay. 20, yeah. yeah. So anyways, I'm downstairs watching it. And at the beginning, I remember, and it was still the same anxiety that I have now is the fact that you know, you're dealing with this, this family, the husband goes to work, but the wife like literally has to fucking do everything and still work from home on top of it. And I'm just getting so pissed watching this movie because like, he won't even fucking pick the kids up from work. And then I find out later, he's a fucking teacher. He's a high school teacher. I go, bitch, you get out at three o'clock, get, go pick up your fucking kids. What do you mean? You're working late. Like, I don't understand that. Like, firstly, he that pissed me off. And how the knowledge on them. Like I'm not picking them or I can't take them and I'm not picking them up. Bye. And Bye. I'm like, what the fuck? You can't just drop that knowledge on someone right then and there. Like, what are you doing, Patrick Wilson? Come on. After she's already on the phone yelling, after she's pa- unpacking the house, I go, what the fuck kind of piece? I go, you know, and I don't remember being mad at him about this back then. I just remember that I was so anxiety ridden because I felt like it's one of those films where, you know, she's seizing everything that's going on and she's losing her fucking shit and he doesn't believe her. Right. And so it's one of those types of films. Like I remember back then, but the last thing I remember, and I know I had a couple drinks, but I wasn't shit faced. I might've fallen asleep was Darth Maul showing up behind Patrick Wilson. And that was the last thing I remember about the movie. Cause I'm like, I have to rewatch this movie. Cause I don't know what the fuck happens. Does the boy wake up? I don't remember. Like, I don't know. What yeah. Yeah. And then as I'm watching it, I'm like, Oh, this is poltergeist. Oh, Lynn Shay thinks she's the shit. Oh. And you know, like, and then we, Lee Winnell has to insert himself in here. And I'm thinking, I was so offended that he wrote this because I'm thinking how the fuck is they just bought a brand new, this is like a, five million dollar home that they're living in at the beginning the the son is now being taken care of at home in his little coma by like a home at home nurse the wife isn't working and you're gonna tell me he's able to afford all this bullshit on his teacher salary are you fucking serious because i want to know what state that they live in that this is that this is possible and he's a high school teacher oh don't even get me started no he's college right i thought he was college it's high school that's high school that's like stadium seating in that fucking classroom though is that really it wasn't stadium seating like they're all deaf oh yeah they're just like little dust and he's like the kids get up the bell rings kids go okay guys i'll see you tomorrow like well, I looked up the average of just, I was just curious, like the national average for teachers. And it's like $43,000, which is not a lot for a family no. four and that fucking big mansion. Like, are you also in the mafia? What else do you do? Like, I don't understand. Where are you getting all this money that you are paying for all this shit? Because they move twice in the movie. They yeah. move right in the beginning and then three months later. And I'm like, closing is not cheap. Okay. I'm in the mortgage mm-hmm. business. It is not cheap. So <laughs> where are you getting all this fucking money from, dude? Well, and that's, I think, to the detriment of this film, because you're trying to be realistic. Like, right. I, I think it'd be more realistic if he was in a more, and I, I don't want to say the teaching isn't stressful. It is a very stressful job. But I know for a fact, because I am a teacher, that I also don't get paid anything either. So I, he he would need to be in a, a type of profession, I think, that would kind of keep him at home that late. Because there's no way, if, if I'm allowed to leave with the kids, my fucking ass is out the door, door before they are. I am not staying in this hell a whole longer than I need to at this and point. He's coming I, home at night too. Like, like, like really late at night. And I'm like, what are you doing so late that you can't, you can't grade papers at home. He's like, getting not- laid. Yeah. <laughs> and not only that, they still have a chalkboard, which back then, even when I was in high school, we always had dry erase boards. Yeah. yeah. But, but, you know, jigsaw was drawn on the chalkboard. I thought it was cute. <laughs> With, you know, Lee Winnell and his stupid ass self. And then, um, <laughs> I, you know what? And he can listen to this and I don't care. He can sit here and argue with me, but I'm so mad at him and just mad that I watched this movie again. And then he was inserted himself into the film. Oh my God. Um, And then how dare you? I know. What was my other point? Oh, and then like, he says, I have to grade tests. I'm like, everything's online now. Like 
put this fuck or even back then you had a scantron you put it in the machine and it grades it for you so don't sit here and come home at 11 o'clock at night and tell your wife who's been dying watching all your fucking kids that you knocked her up with that you were grading tests i don't know i'm just so angry about this movie <laughs> no it made no sense to me either when he was like yeah i was grading tests until until 11 a fucking clock what school is out at usually three four right normally the bell, the bell rings at 2 20 so yeah. do so, not tell me that you're home high at 11 school? When yeah, I was in high so, school, we got it at four. Holy shit, really? I was about 3.30, I think, for me when I was in high school. We started uh, at nine, though. What time did y'all start? Oh, we started at, like, fucking 7.45. Hmm. You started at nine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Apparently, I need to live in 10. Texas. Holy shit. My We're God. lazy as fuck over here. <laughs> well, it has to do with the bus schedule, too. So, yeah. typically, that the, what you're describing, Mikey, here is the middle school schedule, because middle schoolers get picked up and dropped off last. Oh, yeah, because see, it's usually elementary, super early, middle schools early, and then high schools around four. Gets all yeah. Makes the most sense. Yeah. yeah they oh. make the high schoolers get up early. And I tell the kids, because they're always bitching, I said, well, you have after school jobs, right? Yeah. I go, you can get there on time, right? Yeah. I'm like, well, there you go. <laughs> so shut your fucking mouth. Like, I'm oh, up yeah. at 4 a.m. every day, people. Come on. Anyways. So, and that's why you're in bed so early. Oh my God, 4 a.m. Yeah, you guys make fun of me, but I get up early. Like, I'm not just like farting around and going to bed like early for no reason. I didn't think that, but I was like, you know, I go to bed early too, but I was like, man, she goes to bed so early. Yeah, I would too if I was up at 4 a.m. Holy shit. That is so early. Oh. I know. Oh. But anyway, so, you know, when we talk about this movie, I think that the positives that I have with it, it does create a really good atmosphere. It does give you a sense of like, I think Rose Byrne really um is able to convey the stress like just looking at her and watching what this is doing to her and how she is breaking down throughout the film and i like i feel that with her and i i can i can empathize with her and i just i, I you know so that's one of the stronger parts about it i think patrick wilson in this one is a complete ass throughout the film and even when he goes to save the boy at the end he's like oh drops him on the floor i'll catch up to you and then lets him run off by himself. Like, motherfucker, you got this far. Take your son up the fucking stairs. Like, what are you doing? Like, I don't even know. I, I just. Well, he is also, he also does. I thought he was pretty supportive of her in some ways because, you know, she, he's, when um Rose sees the second person for the second time or whatever, you know, when the, that jump scare where he, that guy's walking on the. Oh, yeah. Yeah. On then the he balcony. Just, yeah. That's a great jump scare. And he's like, I believe you. I just, I, it's, I don't, you know, it's hard for me to understand because I don't see anything. And then he does move houses because she gets tired of all the bullshit, which he doesn't see. And then he's like, you know, they move houses and she's like, why don't you believe me? He's like, I, I moved houses for you. So I feel like he's doing his best to be supportive, but he's definitely not all there for sure. You know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like he is trying, but he could try it just like a little harder for sure. I mean, and th and that's where you come into the fact that I think that these films, the, the reason that they're so strong is that you have these familial aspects and these this familial drama, right? And, you know, this back and forth between husband and wife. And I think a lot of people can relate to that, right? And plus that they're ghost stories. They're not gory. And so I really think that they're more accessible to a lot more, like a larger audience than, for example, Terrifier 2 would be. And so <laughs> I, you know, I, I understand the appeal and I, I applaud this. And I, 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 as much as I hate Blumhouse, I will say that I love the fact that they are, you know, basically spe almost specifically a horror production company. And, you know, what other, like, what do we have that is so successful right now besides mm -hmm. that, you know, in horror? Like, I mean, I'm so happy that Terrifier 2 and Damien Loon is doing so well with this, but it's like, you know, usually the horror genre gets like the snub, like always. Yeah. Like Tony Collette and Hereditary, she got totally snubbed at any award ceremony. I thought she should have gotten something for that performance. Yeah. But the Oscars does not like horror. I mean, they snubbed well, her from the sixth sense too. And it's, it, exactly. you know, it's, it, she's an amazing, like, Tony Collette is fucking amazing and the fact that she's just completely overlooked is just beyond me yeah. sorry Mikey, go ahead i was gonna say my thing with blumhouse is i don't shit on it because as we talked about in one of our previous recordings where there's different tiers of horror fans we just happen to be neck deep in this genre 
Blumhouse, like, it's doing what it's doing. All these new generation horror fans, this is going to be their entry into it. You know, you can't have, oh, you don't like scary movies or you've never seen a scary movie? Okay, let's show you Terrifier 2. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like... Because... I'll never watch another one again. <laughs> the what, what Blumhouse reminds me of is when I was young, Dimension Films. Mm. Um, because, and maybe our parents felt that way about Dimension Films. Like, these movies all have the same witty dialogue same stupid kids getting stabbed and killed but i love dimension films that's what we have responsible for halloween and a bunch of scream movies and i no no i know what you do last summer but other ones um <laughs> final destination i believe is new to uh new dimension yeah and so like to me this is today's dimension films there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that i like in it but there's also a lot of stuff that i find not fulfilling because we're used to more because right now independent film is a lot more uh, available and it's easier for creative people to make a horror film not saying it's easy it's easier which is why we have so much so we can get our you know um our need for a specific deep type of horror scratched easily and so if a kid <laughs> like and also blumhouse olivia's first horror movie was um uh, happy death day she didn't know what she was watching but i have a recording of me watching it and she's in her high chair eating mashed potatoes and i didn't know she was paying attention but she's like uh. and so <laughs> it was just kind of funny I, I, sent it, I sent it to adam and he got mad and i was like it's pg-13 he's like she's three um so <laughs> um but yeah it's just you know it is what it is movies are going to come out that we like and movies going to because even like on Netflix, I didn't know that Sweetheart was Blumhouse. And I love Sweetheart. If you haven't seen it, I recommend it. It's a monster movie where a girl gets trapped on an island. Um, you know, so treasures are going to come out of it. But, you know, like like I always say, not every girl is a pearl. Not every <laughs> horror movie is a pearl. <laughs> no, but, and, that's, and that's the thing, too. It's like because I was really shocked. When I found that that the creep and and both creeps and hush and I Austin I don't know if you saw creep part two but oh my oh, god yeah. both of them are so horrifying like mm -hmm. the first one I was thinking about it for days like mm -hmm. it just scared the shit out of me it's so fucking creepy you call it creep yeah, yeah it is a creepy movie it so. lived up to the name for sure with that oh my god oh yeah. just the way he looks oh my god with the, the when the, at the end with the axe and everything so there mark are duplass, it's like how how the fuck did they nab mark duplass well i think isn't it isn't him and his brother responsible for producing oh is it his brother um because i know patrick bryce is the one who directed it and wrote it and i know it's you know it's him and mark duplass are i didn't are they brothers i mean that would i make thought sense. I thought I've heard people refer to like the production team as the Duplass brothers. So oh, Mark Mark shit. Duplass wrote it. Oh, he wrote Creep? Yeah, it yeah. was written by Patrick Bryce and Mark du Duplass. Yeah, Mark Duplass, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, like uh, it's just very interesting that they got him because I love him and, and everything he's in and to see him in that that role is very intimidating. He he plays that role very well, so Yeah. I was it was nice to see him there. It gets under your skin, and so if if no one watches Blumhouse or no one's seen it, I think you can even stream Creep right now on Netflix. Yep. Uh, so you know what? If you haven't seen it, for those of you listening, please watch Creep. It is you'll be creep that you like you won't be able to sleep alone that night. Like you're gonna have to turn light on. I, it is yeah. scary. It's so fucking horrifying. So, you know there are a lot of good gems, and I you know I, I love all the purges. I love the Forever Purge, and I know that you see don't like it for the political thing, but I think that since the first one they're all they're all very strongly political right and so to deal with horror is always a, a commentary especially about what's going on at the time and i think that the purge really encapsulates that but when you talk about like even with sinister like sinister when it came out is such a just a visceral thing like you know our our, our voyeuristic urge to watch people be you know murdered like this right and just and and then taking that family element and just ripping it to shreds like sinister is so amazing with that and then i was talking to micah about i was like oh, okay sinister is bum house and i love that one he's like oh no because that guy looks like a cheap slipknot character at the end and i'm like okay 
Oh, yeah, he does kind of look like Mick Thompson a little bit. Yeah. So at the end, right. yes, but they don't show the monster until the very end and he pops out and then it's over. So it's yeah. not like it's, he threw out the film. The second one sucked. But yeah, I don't think it was, you guys it's not that great. It's pretty yeah, it, it, yeah, they wanted to do that for like a cash grab because the first one was so good. And then, you know, Ethan Hawke's obviously not in it because he dies in the first one. Uh, spoiler alert. And then, yeah, they just did not follow it up with nearly as good as the first one it was just it was yeah it was not that great i yeah. was so excited too i was like yay uh oh no not that great okay yeah and yeah. It, you know it is what it is what are you gonna do i mean i i can't believe though that a lot of uh jordan peels like us is on this list you know i get out on there too right get out is on here yeah. glass is on here i'm not Shyamalan movies are on here so i you know it's it they you know they whatever they've but got some hits yeah they've got some hits they do they do i mean but you know then you have the fire starter and mikey said that was shit and i'm not watching that new one even oh, though you I, haven't seen it no but i don't, do don't. love what's his face so i might don't watch bother. it He's oh so man it is my least favorite horror movie if not my least favorite movie in general from this year they just complete have you read the book at all and like seen the original movie i i don't like the movie i don't like the original movie did you have you read the book i've never read the book but... then you might then you might like it you might like it because it completely destroys everything from the book and just it changes everything in the worst possible way so if you've never read the book then you might actually enjoy the remake honestly and i'm not surprised though i mean when you do that's a stephen king isn't it yep it's yeah one of my I'm favorite not... books of his I'm not surprised. And like, you know, I know that he has a lot of like, you know, especially with Carrie, all of his little telekinetic things that he does. But, yeah. you know, I, I it's, for me, it's hard to read Stephen King sometimes. Like I'll start a book and I'm just like, hmm. <laughs> That's stop. why I like Fire, Firestarter so much because it's not, it's not very long and it's not because, you know, he has a tendency to just over explain the fuck oh, out of Oh my God, everything. Especially with women's breasts. And I'm like, dude, I don't need to know this much about it. But Firestarter is actually like probably his best book in my opinion, because it's short, it's concise and it's not like diarrhea mouth. So that's why I like Firestarter. But yeah, I, I can understand not wanting to read his books because they are very lengthy. Holy shit. Too much description, bro. So, so before we leave today, I just want to touch on some of the upcoming films. So they've got the nanny. I don't know what the hell that is. Megan, which is basically the the remake of Child's oh Play or Chucky, whatever. I, you mean the new gay icon? The new gay icon. Yeah, get the fuck out of here with that shit. Um, Insidious Fear of the Dark. Which oh, that's you were what right. called? Insidious Fear, Fear, Fear of the Dark? Of the dark? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm sorry. I should have scrolled down. I could have helped you earlier, but I forgot. I, um, <laughs> I don't like that name. That's a weird name. Fear the dark, huh? And then we have the Exorcist remake, which oh. David Gordon Green is going to be involved in. And David Gordon Green, and I don't care if he hears this, can suck my dick because I am so. I you didn't have one, Aid. I don't have one, but if I had one, he my could metaphor. choke on it for all he for all I care because I am so offended. I'm still offended. By the two hours of my life that I'll never get back. <laughs> did you I like it, David. Like, did you like the first one though? Like the yeah, I liked one. the first one. First one oh. was good. Mikey, I didn't, no, Mikey didn't. No, like it. I I didn't like the first one. Okay, um, Mikey liked likes to be one. separate. That's fair. I don't like to be separate. I just like good movies that can separate a film from the oh. actual franchise it's set in and appreciate okay. what it stands for. Well, then you should like part six and nobody likes part six so whatever. i don't like the daniel harris versions either thank you or well, the cult of whatever yeah no that's part six is the uh, the curse. curse of yeah curse oh my God. favorite halloween honestly but anyways <laughs> no but like david gordon green don't you fucking fuck up the exit because personally the exorcist is a perfect movie i watch it i watch it all year long i literally whenever it the exorcist it's um, this is how sad i am but it is a comfort film to me it makes me feel good. It makes me feel better. Like I put it on and I'm just happy. I don't know why, but probably because I, it's not just the scenes with Reagan, but all the dialogue back and forth, it's very seventies and just dealing with like when father Karras and the detective are going back and forth with each other, talking shit. Like, I just love that. Right. So I, um, Austin, when we were being interviewed in like five years on a true crime story and there was like, <laughs> what was your first sign that something was <laughs> off about her? We're going to rewind to, the Exorcist is a comfort movie for me. Yeah, November 10th at 6 06 p.m. Uh yeah, my comfort movie is the Exorcist. Case closed. That's it. 
Done. Yeah. Moving well, on. I hate all of you. Anyway. <laughs> So I think this was a fun episode. I had a really good time. I hope you guys did as well. And I know that with, I know it's time to go. So Mikey it's got up and go. left. It hasn't even been an hour yet. I know, but Mikey's already, Mikey's already just I haven't left. Olivia's over there crying about something. Oh my God. Can you please go be a parent? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to be. <laughs> anyway. Um, so before we leave today, Mikey, where can we get some fun shirts? You can get some super fun shirts at slasherspod.com. No, slasherspod.redbubble.com. Awesome. And then if you want to support us monetarily, patreon.com slash patreon. So, if, you want, <laughs> if you want to support us monetarily, um, you can join our Patreon at patreon.com slash slasherspod. So Austin, go ahead and plug your shit for us so we can get the hell out of here. <sighs> okay. If you'd like to follow us on social media, we are on Facebook at Just Frightmares. Look for the skull with the headphones. Instagram and slasher app at Frightmares Podcast. We're on Twitter, but I'm thinking about leaving due to certain circumstances regarding a weirdo that took over. Uh, but it's Frightmares underscore pod. And then I am also Dr. Proctor on Letterboxd if you care to give me a follow. We are streaming on literally every major platform for uh, podcasts because Anchor just plugs it into everything, everything. all the time. So yeah. many things. So many things that I don't even know we're on. And I'm like, oh, cool, great. Thank you, Anchor. Oh, and plus, I, you guys have like really nice shirts. Like, I'm so jealous about how cute your shirts are because it's oh, are they? Well, in, my, in the I just graphic. sent one to Mikey. Oh, Mikey, where is it? Hello. It's not here yet. It's I sent it mail. yesterday. Sorry. I sent it oh, yesterday. Okay. So, well, well, I guess we'll just blame the hurricane for that one, too. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did they, did they never get their... Uh, someone was missing their packages from you. Jake lady. and Jason. Yeah. Oh, my I'm really sad about that. Whatever. Mikey got his, so that's okay. Boop, boop. Mikey and Doug got there and Doug like and that's the thing is like Doug and Jake are like 20 minutes apart so how the hell did Doug get his yeah and then Jake I think it's like buried in a pile in Jake's house like you know Sierra brings in the the mail and then everything gets thrown into a corner I imagine because she's a teacher (laughs) and they have children I'm just imagining this I don't know their life I'm just speculating and it's probably buried somewhere in the rubble you have to send me a picture of uh, it was David Bowie uh, from Labyrinth, right? Yeah, it was yeah. it was a artwork. So I sent everybody artwork. I actually have something for you, Austin. But I figured oh, at some point when yeah. I see you, I'll just give okay. it to you. It's still I'll in. Come, the, I'll just come downtown. And, and, <laughs> oh shit! I'll just come downtown and throw things at your window wherever it is. I'll just keep throwing things until oh, yeah. I, I find you. Go, I'll just show you really quick. It's cute. Oh shit! Yeah. I mean, it's just fun. Something fun from the show. So this guy did all this really cool artwork and I was obsessed. Can we see this or is my green screen fucking it up? Uh, it looks like Freddy. Uh, I can't. It is Freddy. It's, yeah, but you know what? We can't see because. You just got a sneak peek. There it is. Yeah. I keep, I keep seeing just the, the striped t-shirt and the hat. He's in and out. He's in and out. <laughs> so everybody got artwork. This, I mean, this guy was so awesome. And he had all of these prints. And I'm like going through everything. And I'm like, oh, my God, Doug would love this. And Jake would love this. And, blah, 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 blah. and I, I don't know what you like, Austin, but I just picked an extra one up for you. Well, I have um, a tattoo of Freddie, so you nailed it. Oh, me too. Yay. Okay. Do you really? I do. Yeah, I have his gloves. I have a whole side piece. It's a, it's a mesh of everybody's weapons. Awesome. It's so fun. See, and the, the Exorcist is my comfort movie. So anyways, <laughs> um, all right. So with that, everybody, I love you guys. Thank you guys for joining me today on this special episode. It will come out in December. It's November right now, but it's not going to come out until next month, but I'm glad that we got it over with. Anything else we'd like to say before we go? No, well, thanks for having me again. And uh, it's been like three episodes we've done in the span of uh, two weeks, I feel. So no, we're obsessed. Like- we can't get enough. I like it. I like it. (laughs) I know. Well, it's the group chat. Just keep coming back. So I know. And on behalf of Mikey and Austin and myself, goodbye and good day. Bye. Bye.